Hello all the crazy people out there, my name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons and making games, and welcome back to me seeing how much of my old code I can remember without having to look it up. So, uh, this is 3D wizard game, this is going to be a uh, Legend of Zelda-like um, 3D platformer-ish uh, game that I'll be making here on YouTube because that's a thing that I do. Uh, today, uh, last time, I, I got a bunch of things in the game that make it look a little less dead, uh, for example a skybox. Um, not the highest resolution images, but it'll, uh, it'll do. Uh, some, uh, some 3D particle systems for, uh, just to get that squared away so I don't have to do it later. And today we are going to be getting some additional miscellaneous shader effects in here, and hopefully, uh, getting those squared away, so things that I don't have to do later. Um, billboard shaders, uh, ripple slash water shaders, um, I've done videos on both of those things in the past, and... Uh, we are going to see how much of this I can remember without having to look it up, or if I'm just going to cave and look it up anyway, just to save time. Let me see. So first, um, I'm going to uh, I'm going to come up with, uh, let's say, a sprite that we're going to draw uh, billboarded. Uh, we can call that SPR billboard test. I'm going to just make this like, I need something that'll like stand out against the background. Alright, I swear this isn't supposed to look creepy. Alright, that's gonna look immensely creepy. Let's, uh, let's not do that. Um, let's maybe instead, uh... All right, that still looks creepy, but less so than it does when it's red. All right, you're gonna be our, our billboard test. Let's put you middle center just to just to make my life a little easier. And uh, do I want to try to write this from scratch, or do I want to do what I'm probably actually gonna do and go into my old my old code files and um and use the the billboard shader that I did uh, back in 2020, apparently? Has it really been that long? Or uh, 2021, I think. Hang on. Nope, it really was 2020. Wow, that was a long time ago now. All right, so there's a few things I'm gonna need. Uh, one is gonna be draw sprite billboard. And I'm just going to take this uh, let us create ourselves a script. And we are going to... We are going to use that to, uh, to draw our sprites billboarded. Um, I'm also going to, uh... Go into the shaders. And grab the shd underscore billboard shader. Um, I believe what I'm actually gonna mostly want is actually going to be in the vertex shader. Uh, this is going to require a bit of additional setup. Um, because I'm going to have to fold it into the, uh, make it work with, with the deferred renderer instead of just regular old forward rendering. Um, this is a little convenient because we've already got our position in world space, um, right here, which is like half of, half of our work. Um... Depending on your coordinate system, I'm using positive Z. You may or may not need to set this to negative one. I don't actually remember if that's actually true because I think in OpenGL, like, view space is always, is always the same. Anyway, um, we'll worry about that later. So I'm going to take the view space position. I'm going to pass that over to the shader as that value over there. Um, instead of using GM underscore matrices matrix worldview, uh, that has already been calculated like this, and uh, that's going to be like one more matrix multiplication than we really need. But all right, position, color, and text cord. All right, that, that is our attribute list. And I think everything else should be should be the same from there on out. Okay. So instead of just uh, using shader billboard, it's going to be shader gbuff billboard, and it's going to have the same like um, outputs and material type values and, and everything else. 
All right, and that might be... Uh, this is going to bother me, isn't it? That one, like, extra matrix multiplication, it's really not going to bottleneck the shader because it's going to have a lot of vertex batch breaks if you do it a lot. And I'm not even going to use this often. This is just going to um, be a very occasional effect that I'll be using on very particular objects because, as I, as I mentioned in the, uh, the original billboard and shader video, I really don't actually like the effect that much, and I think a lot of people overuse it. Anyway, uh, let's go into the draw event for obj underscore game, and let's try to draw ourselves a... Um, Draw sprite billboard. Uh, this can be SPR billboard test. Uh, the sum image can be zero. Uh, X can be where do I want this to be? How about uh, let's make this like 400, uh, 40 so that it's hovering a little bit above the ground. And ZZ can be uh, let's make this uh, like 100 on the Z. And hopefully we'll at least have something. And, okay, I definitely feel like uh, we are not correctly setting the, setting the view space axis. Um, if I comment that out uh, for, uh, for spherical billboarding. See, I'm just changing code randomly and guessing because I can't remember what I did. All right, there we go. All right. The transparency is, is not quite behaving. <laughs> yeah, we're having our material set, even though there's transparent pixels here. Um, interesting. Anyway, uh, I probably should have a discard in there because this is going to be used on sprites with transparency uh, more than likely. So let's, uh, let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of this comment also. Uh, do not touch this future self and, uh, and, and all of us will be, will be much happier. Um, let's see, uh, if, if like this value's alpha is less than 0 0.9, I'm just gonna discard. And I'm just gonna hard code that because all of the sprites that I'm gonna use on this are are probably just gonna be um, no alpha blending at all. If I if I do change that later on, um, all right, that looks completely just awful, but. Get off my screen. If I do change this to have sprites that are alpha blended, if I'm like able to, I guess I could um, turn off the depth buffer and like set the set the 3D positions alpha uh, to zero so that the like the alpha material isn't written. Eh. Future me problems that are specifically like future me after I make some more artistic decisions problems. Uh, we've got ourselves a billboard shader. All right, um, next, uh, I'm also going to want to mess around with uh, water shaders. Uh, I think this is gonna be a little bit, a little bit more interesting. Uh, I did not actually want the 3D version of that. Uh, a little bit more interesting than, um, than just the billboard shader itself. I am going to, and again, for uh, people who are interested in the technology behind the Unreal Engine 1 Potter games, um, some of this might might start to ring a few bells, exactly what I'm going to use this for. But uh, let's see, we can define our displacement and uh, time uniforms up here. And... Um, those like offset values are a little bit, a little bit hard coded, but I can mess around with those afterwards. Uh, let's see, when we sample from the base texture, I'm going to want to add the offset there. And, uh, when I set the shader, one, when I, um, when I say draw a sprite billboarded, uh, I will allow you to pass in... Uh, the shader that you want to use here as an optional argument. 
Uh, the default will just be the regular billboard shader, and the the one that I'll probably actually be using will be the um, the ripple one that I'm editing now, so that the ripples will be applied to the the billboard effect. And I'm also going to need to go and um, one have some noise texture for for the displacement. Um, this may or may not be the noise texture that is in like one of the Nintendo games, so I may or may not have to change this out eventually. But um, I, I honestly don't remember uh, what the noise texture that I used here was from. But uh, for, for now, it'll work. Um, let's see, that is going to need to be on its own separate texture page. Um... Some additional setup. When this is drawn, we're gonna have to set all the uh, all the values. Uh, so that's gonna be in like object one, draw event, and these values here. All right. Again, uh, we're gonna have to set that. Oh, you know what? Um, the samplers. The texture uniforms will, will have their values retained between shader sets, but the samplers won't necessarily. Uh, so I am actually going to have to do that in here. I don't want weird things to happen. Um, SPR noise. And... To make that look better, I will um, enable texture, like texture filtering. All right, you had a very interesting reaction to that. Because I also need to update the uniform names. All right, so you are still having an interesting reaction to that, but in a more helpful way than I, uh, than I had the first time. So that's a good start. There's a couple changes I'm going to want to make. GPU set text um, repeat. I'm going to want to set this to true. Uh, GPU set text filter. Uh, I'm going to want to set that to true. Uh, I will set these to false at the end over here down there. Um, everything else in the game I want to have more, more or less be like pixel arty, but... Um, all right, now you are, you are very Ripley. Okay, so that's still a little bit weirdly noisy. Um, if I, for example, decrease the size of the ripples. Um, Jasper actually commented on, on my original... Uh, water shader video about this and did point out that uh, you generally would just use displacement dot red green channels instead of like grayscaling it uh, a little bit easier uh, a little bit faster to compute a little bit easier to write so I'll, I'll do that instead um and the offset i'll make this i'll divide that by like 16 instead okay and that should produce much smaller ripples uh why don't you like that oh that needs to be a vec 2 And since that already is a vector, I don't need to construct one later. Okay. All right, much smaller ripples. Uh, I can actually shrink that further. You know what I can do? Uh, cut out one of the middlemen and just uh, divide that term by 16. Make the code a little less convoluted. Let's divide it by four again. That should make the ripples much smaller. And if I can make like the time value go a little bit faster too. All right, so the ripples are much smaller and dividing time value by four. I don't know if that's something I want to do. I could sit here playing around with like the size of the ripples all day. All right, that's good enough for now. If I want to fine tune it later, I'll fine tune it later. Um, let's see, before I proceed, there is one more change I want to make, and that is that I will make the time offset itself a uniform, and that way um, I should be able to like wrap it um, between zero and one uh, in, in GML side so that 
I don't have to deal with like floating point weirdness happening if time exceeds a certain value. Um, so this is going to be uniform vec two uh, u underscore time. Um, I'm going to simply have that be another uniform that's set over here. Actually, it it already is set, but um, we can say, for example, current time divided by a thousand. Um, fractional part of that, uh, the fractional part of uh, that divided in half. And that's really, this is really arbitrary. Uh, this just affects the way that the, uh, the distortion texture scrolls. And I have texture repeating on, so that should, all right. That should produce more or less the same answer. Uh, you're very jittery, aren't you? But, um... We're gonna have those scroll values wrapped between 0 and 1 so we don't get any, like, um... floating point weirdness kicking in. Okay. All right, just to make sure that it's scrolling correctly, I've decided that um, I'm just going to draw this with the, the ripple texture on it. All right. See, I still feel like we're scrolling like a lot faster than we really should be. All right, let me get this under control. I want to get this under control. So if we like divide you by like 10 instead. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a much smoother scroll. I think about every 10 seconds you should go through a repetition. Um, what if I what if I actually don't do that? What if I just have you scroll horizontally? That's vertically. I want horizontally. I know my horizontals and verticals. All right, that's sufficiently ripply. Um, I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to stop fussing with it. If I want to fuss with it later, I can fuss with it later. Uh, let's see. That's going to be the billboard plus the water ripply shader. Um, oh, you know what I'm also never doing is setting the material type here. For what I have in mind, you're never going to be lit anyway. Uh, this is going to be a visual that will be drawn without lighting. So I guess that's fine. Like, eh? I don't want to spend any more time messing around, around with it than I have. So that's going to be the, uh, the billboard shader I can check off, the ripple shader I can check off. Um, the matter of water... I guess, like, I could always have a version of that that's just minus... minus the billboard effect. I don't even know if I'm going to use that, but I'll do it. SHD, um, G buff ripple. There's two underscores in there. So we can get rid of all of the, um, the billboard encode. And we can bring back 
uh, matrix worldview times the object space position to put you in view space. And that's going to give us a regular old um, bog standard vertex shader. And if I do, for example, shader set um, on one of, like, let's, let's have the rock pile ripple just because we can. So we're going to set the material type. Uh, we'll also have you um, rippling around and, and have the, uh, the lit material. So we can use SHD G buff ripple. Um, and the, uh, the rock that we draw in the corner. The rock that we draw in the corner should have some distortion effects applied to it. And it's actually not going to. Uh, because, uh, once again, for the millionth time, I have forgotten to, like, do all this. Oh, me. Why? Why do I have to forget, like, all this basic stuff so, so frequently? Um, this draw event is definitely going to be due for cleanup after I get all this stuff working. Honestly, probably the next video is going to be when this is going to be all due for a cleanup. Um, I'm turning it off here, aren't I? Okay, I am. Save me from myself. All right, it runs. And we have all right, we have ripples happening on this rock. And it looks very strange, but we do have the uh, we do have the distortion effect and it is lit correctly in accordance with the deferred renderer. Um, if I can like get the, the spotlight off it and like look at it from the point of view of oh that that point light doesn't have a um Oh, there, there should be a... Are you a world space? Oh, you are. You are getting lit. It's just very, very faintly from the front. Okay. I was just going to say, why does it look like it's not being lit? And then I realized that it was. All right. I'm not going to say that's a water shader. That could just be any old, any old ripple shader that you want to apply to any old object. Um, let's see. I probably should... Uh... Either bookmark that for when I post when I post last week's video and I want to include that, or um, otherwise just like stop clicking on it when I don't mean to. Uh, we can we can finish that. I think that is going to do it for this video. Uh, this was definitely shorter. Uh, this definitely had a few fewer um, hiccups in it than previous ones did. Uh, I'm going to archive all of these uh, because we're done with them. Um, I'm going to add. Add the ones that I want to do next time to my hand. Um, I definitely want to add a card for clean up the draw event. Um, I can say that's a bit of a high priority item. That's not going to take a lot of work, hopefully. Um, I'm going to add that to the basic 3D stuff milestone. It says 35 days out, which feels like a long time, except I am recording these in advance, so it's going to be closer by the time... Um, this video is actually posted. Uh, was there anything else? No. Uh, I'm also going to want one for clean up the asset browser and project workspace. That's going to be a medium priority item, I think. Uh, effort one, hopefully. Uh, save that to that milestone. It's not going to be a lot of work, but it's definitely going to need to be done. Okay. And as for assigning my tasks for next time, uh, that's definitely going to be these two. And I'd like to have a a video settings um, functionality uh, ready to go, even if actually having like a, a settings menu in the game is still a very long way off indeed uh, from this point. But I want to have things like um, a resolution manager and that sort of thing. All right. Uh, where are my project metrics? This is my project metrics. Um, 
I feel like this looks a lot like it did last time, but that could be because I, I recorded last week's video and this one back to back. Anyway, uh, I'm going to end things off here. So, uh, my name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. If you want the code for this, look for the GitHub repository in the video description. Look for the 0.5 release, which is going to be what we did in, in this week. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute to the channel, links to that can be found in all the usual places. Otherwise, I try to post about two game dev videos a week, one let's make a game like this, and one tutorial tutorial, so if any of that appeals to you, feel free to subscribe. I hope you all found this interesting, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Army Armbuster, DJ Gibbles, Edward Holt, Game Maker, Gamer Player, Harold Guidry, Manta Ray, Project 103, Rowdy Coder, Sindra Larson, Square Crow, V Tro V, and Zenjamin for supporting these videos. If you want to contribute to the channel, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.